Vancouver is a dynamic and picturesque city located on the west coast of Canada in the province of British Columbia. Known for its stunning natural beauty and thriving urban atmosphere, Vancouver offers a unique blend of outdoor adventures, cosmopolitan experiences, and a laid back coastal vibe with a great food scene. Let's get tipsy, y'all. into Canada. Yay. I know, how exciting is that, right? Yay. So we have about an hour drive up from the border to get to Vancouver, where we'll be for a whole week before making our way to Alaska. Once we parked the RV, we grabbed a bus to head downtown. We just got to the Gas Town area here in downtown Vancouver. We're off to find the gas town steam clock. Built in 1977, this steam clock is one of the few remaining steam powered clocks in the world. Every quarter hour, the clock plays a melody while steam is released. The gas town neighborhood is a popular destination with its charming cobblestone streets and trendy restaurants and boutiques. We headed down to the Alibi Room for a drink. With over 50 beers on tap, we grabbed a pint and a snack and enjoyed this beautiful weather. Alibi Room was great. Was lots of really great taps. They had suggested a, another brewery just down the way. It's about a five to 10-ish minute walk. So we're gonna go check out what local beers they have on tap. Founded in 1995, Steamworks Brew Pub is a microbrewery based in the Gastown neighborhood. We grabbed a flight of both flagship and seasonal beers to sample before heading home. That is a wrap on Friday. We're gonna go call it quits tonight. We're gonna start fresh first thing in the morning. Yeah, first thing. Good night. Despite having a full kitchen in the RV, we opted for a baked good this morning and we made our way to Angus Bakery for breakfast. We went with croissants this morning. I got the spinach and feta, and Chris got a... Balsamic, onion, and bacon. Mm. I mean, not the best to eat in a car, but... <laughs> we quickly devoured it before starting our park adventure. Stanley Park, y'all. It is awesome. So this park is a thousand acres. To put that in perspective, Central Park is 850 acres. Yep. Math, how big is it? It's about one fifth bigger <laughs> than Central Park and about half the size of London's Richmond Park. So it's amazing how they have structured this entire park here. It's full of different trails. Uh, you can drive around it, although it is one way. So if you happen to be driving and you miss the part that you wanted to stop at, you have to loop all the way back around the park. So keep that in mind if you're gonna come visit. The hollow tree is a western red cedar, which is actually British Columbia's provincial tree. It's one of the largest trees and often becomes hollow in its later years, even as it continues to grow. This hollow tree is actually over a thousand years old, probably one of the oldest trees in Stanley Park. To put this in perspective, I'm only 5'5". Five five. <laughs> Lost Lagoon is a 41-acre freshwater lake that is a nesting ground to many bird species, including Canadian geese and ducks. While we could spend a whole video on just Stanley Park, we decided to share only our favorite stops in addition to the beautiful skyline views. We are more than halfway done. We just saw the totem poles, and there's a lighthouse you want to go see. And then we're going to go find some beer. About time for a brewski. I definitely think it's time for beer. Stanley Park Brewing is located in the actual park. We decided to split a flight again and enjoy this weather. You may be wondering why we have both a flight and a bigger beer here. Well, I'll tell you. Anytime we get a flight, Sam always takes it immediately away from me and to go take pictures and videos and I never have anything to drink. So I'm just sitting there biding time until I get my beer back. Now I'm starting to order a bullpen beer just so I can have it on reserve for when she leaves me. Cheers. We 
spent a majority of our day in the park, but went into the city for a quick cocktail. We had a local suggest uva, and we weren't disappointed with our drinks. Granville Island Market here in Vancouver is an indoor market that has different art shops and food shops and produce and all sorts of little boutiques and we're about to go check it out. Our first stop in the market was at Lee's Donuts which are infamous among locals and tourists. Established in 1979, Lee's Donuts has gained a reputation for serving some of the best and freshest handmade donuts. Grabbed a classic and a Bavarian cream filled one to try. We are here at the market and everywhere you go there are so many smells and so many great things. Sensory overload, food overload, we are so hungry now, wait see the oldest food. If you're going to visit the Granville Island Public Market, make sure you come hungry. There's so many different things to try you don't want to miss out. As the Granville Island Market is actually on an island, be prepared to take a water taxi across the way to get to it. Absolutely stuffed from lunch, we ended up going downtown for a drink and ended up at Earl's Kitchen. A popular chain here in Canada, Earl's serves food and has a complete bar, but what we were here for was to try some Canadian wine. While we didn't get to visit this trip, we hope to make it out to their wine region soon. Joe Forte's Seafood and Chop House is a renowned seafood restaurant that has become an iconic institution in the city since 1985. Of course, we got the oysters, and I ordered the salmon while Chris had chipino, which is a seafood soup. We were celebrating our wedding anniversary, and they brought us out a nice treat for us to enjoy. Having spent the majority of this day eating and exploring the city, we went home to enjoy a very quiet evening with our kitty. There are two suspension bridges in the area for Vancouver, but we decided to visit the free one at Lynn Canyon Park. This particular suspension bridge is over 165 feet tall and stretches 160 feet across. Made of sturdy cables and wooden planks, the bridge gently sways with each step, offering a very unique view and vantage point of the canyon below. The park offers many different trails and we decided to take a short walk down to Twin Falls for some more stunning views. It's been a hot minute since so we've had to climb up a lot of stairs. I guess this counts as working for that beer. We are in the shipyard area, which is actually right across from Vancouver. You can take the ferry boat to get over or the bus. And there are, in this area, seven breweries, a winery, a cidery, and a distillery, all within a three block radius. So if you're looking to get your drink on outside the city, you got some time, this is where you should come. Streetcar Brewing is found down some stairs and also has an outdoor patio that leads out to the alley. We grabbed a flight here to sample all the delicious local beer. Just a few blocks away is Beer Brewing Company. The bartender suggested we head here for their great craft beers. We grabbed a pint, sat outside on their patio, enjoyed the nice sunshine, and drank in some beers. It is our last full day here in Vancouver. We are very sad to be leaving, but very excited to be heading north towards Alaska. We've been saving this for the perfect weather day, which just happened to be today. We are heading up to Grouse Mountain. It's about 30 minutes outside of Vancouver going northbound. And the mountain sits at 3,700 feet and they just happen to have a bar at the very top. So we're gonna go take one more last view of Vancouver from the mountain, enjoy some nice cold drinks and say goodbye to this lovely, lovely city. One of the main attractions on Grouse Mountain is the Sky Ride, a scenic gondola ride that transports visitors from the base all the way up to the mountaintop. The journey itself provides panoramic views of the surrounding mountains, forest, and city skyline, setting the stage for quite an unforgettable experience. As you ascend 4,000 feet above the city, it takes roughly eight minutes to reach the top. We 
came up to drink in the views, literally, at one of their bars called Altitude. With a large sprawling patio that overlooks the mountain in the valleys below, it is quite the spot to have a drink. We couldn't leave Canada without trying some poutine, so we enjoyed it here on the mountaintop. During the warmer months, it offers a variety of hiking trails that showcase the natural beauty of the region. The mountain itself is home to a refuge for orphaned grizzly bears, although they were hibernating when we were visiting. We did, however, get to see our lumberjack show, which was quite an interesting thing if you've never seen one. While the tickets seemed a little pricey, we personally think it was worth it to visit Grouse Mountain. That's a wrap on Vancouver. Coming up next on Boozing Abroad, we drive over 2,200 miles to Alaska. From unbelievable scenery and wildlife encounters, including some local drinks, we can't wait to show you the journey there. Take two. Boop. Got it in my hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's on your leg too. It's everywhere. It's really good though. Okay. Dare throw that at me. Don't you do it. Topher? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.